Okay, so Matthew, there is something that we have to do right now. Yes, what is that? We have to put some caterpillars on our face. Okay, so I just took a train from New York City over to Connecticut to go to this beautiful backyard in order to meet somebody very special. I like to call him the Caterpillar Whisperer for a very obvious reason. Take a look. Okay, so this handful of caterpillars is the hand of this guy. Introduce yourself. I'm Matthew Nachisaki. I'm a high schooler that lives in Connecticut, and I've been interested in insects since I can remember, so basically since I was two and a half. That's amazing. And in your hand, you basically have a million amazing, giant, squirmy caterpillars. What do these belong to? These belong to all moths, surprisingly, as most people think moths are dull and drab. This one's from Arizona and Texas. Okay. We have this one that's from my own backyard. I can find these around here. Awesome. The Luna is also from around here. Okay. And the Imperial is found south of New Jersey and downward. And then I have the biggest one, everyone's favorite, the Hickory Horn Devil. This is everybody's favorite. Oh yeah, definitely. And why is this everybody's favorite? Just because of its size. It's just so massive and so wild looking. It looks like an alien. Oh my gosh, hold it up to your face. All right, let's take a look here. <clears throat> All of these caterpillars, as moths, don't eat a thing. They don't even possess mouth parts. Are you serious? Yeah, they, they only live a week, and they don't eat a thing. They so don't what do even, they do? They just mate and die. Mate and die. They so they do all of their feeding. That is why this guy is so fat. Like, look how, that is a chunky caterpillar. So they oh, yeah. eat all the time. Yes. This is basically a tube for food, right? They just eat and poop and eat and grow Okay, and can you tell me the special word for caterpillar poop? Frass. Frass. Did you guys know that? So there is a very special word only for the poop of caterpillars. Yeah, and you can even identify caterpillars down to the family just by looking at their poop. What? Okay, so these two caterpillars end up turning into these two cocoons over here. Yes. And then what happens? And then next spring, since they hibernate as cocoons, it's like a personal chamber for everything you need. You need protection from weather, protection from predators, everything. And then when it warms up in the spring, so around May, June, they will emerge into beautiful giant silk moths. Basically, my whole summer is the project of raising caterpillars. It keeps me busy all summer long. And I understand you also have an Instagram. Yes, I do. What do you do on Instagram? On Instagram, I post mainly captions about interesting things about the life histories and just information about the insects that I'm depicting in the photos. I want everyone to know that insects are so fascinating if you just take the time and, and ignore the bias of them being just crazy and scary. They're just really beautiful animals. Amen to that. Yes, definitely. So cool.